But across the country, cops are looking more and acting more like soldiers. The militarization of a police in America. A small, sleepy town in North Carolina called Roanoke Rapids may bear little resemblance to Kabul or Baghdad. But its police department now has its own mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, or AMRAPs. So do police departments in many other towns and counties across the U.S. All thanks to the Pentagon's so-called 1033 program, which provides or transfers surplus Department of Defense military equipment to state and local civilian law enforcement agencies without charge. Since last night's declaration of martial law, the soldiers are moving in about the small people, and we care about the small people. High-powered rifles, flashbang grenades, burning buildings, a community under siege. Now these images behind me depict a war zone, but this is actually Ferguson, Missouri, a Midwestern town of about 23,000. Earlier this year, police searching for a drug dealer near Atlanta threw a flash grenade into a home that landed in a toddler's crib. The boy known locally as Baby Boo Boo had half his face and chest blown off and spent weeks in a hospital in a medically induced coma. Trust. Do you trust the government? You're telling me that you're going to fake some terrorist thing just to get some money out of Congress? Well, unfortunately, Mr. Hennessy, I have no idea how to fake killing 4,000 people. So we're just going to have to do it for real. So why is this thought to be a good idea to actually bring Go these high caliber weapons into U.S. streets? I don't think it's a good idea. You know, Captain, one might ask, uh, will this equipment not obscure the lines between soldier and police officers, especially in those small communities where they're already being distributed? What's your take on that? Yes, it will obviously obscure the line between military and the police. A woman in Evansville, Indiana, has sued the city's police department after its SWAT team smashed through her front door and threw flash grenades in her home just to serve a search warrant two years ago. The 11 officers looking for evidence after an anonymous internet post threatened the local police chief found only the 68-year-old woman and her 18-year-old daughter in the house and handcuffed them. And they didn't find any evidence in the search. City lawyers released a helmet cam video of the raid to support their argument that the force was objectively reasonable. Take a listen to the SWAT team's reaction at the end of the raid. Jeff thought you were just going to dive and lay on four four. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I right, did. That <laughs> ram hit a lot harder than I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just glass. 50 pound ram ain't no match for a 10 pound pan of glass. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been fun to do it a bounce off. Well, that's what I figured you were going to play glass. So you can make fun of it if it's 15 hits right, 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 or one hit. Some police officers have, have said that it's necessary to have uh, these kind of equipment come in, especially if you're covering a protest and it gets out of hand. Police officers are sometimes uh, injured or shot. Uh, and so they think that in some ways it is a good idea to have them there. That is the worst idea I could think of, is to have high caliber weapons at a protest. Think of Kent State where they shot so many and killed so many innocent people. And they were not high caliber weapons. Can you imagine the massacre that would take place if officers had high caliber weapons? What happens to the equipment then at that point? 
What, what do you think should happen to that equipment that's being uh, brought back home? No problem with them destroying that, that equipment whatsoever instead of using it in this country. Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. I want to let you know that corporate America is involved in this. This is a major money market. They will sell this high equipment. The repair, the maintenance for this will come from uh, taxpayers' money. Corporate America will make billions off of, this, off of this equipment. You heard of the prison industrial complex. You heard of the military industrial complex. Corporate America now wants to make a police industrial complex where they'll make billions off of police departments.